What if we told you there was one strategy that works at all ratings for every single class? Even better, what if we guaranteed that it was easy, beginner-friendly, and works in every bracket? In fact, you probably lost to this exact same strategy multiple times, and you're not alone. Because every rank one streamer flames this playstyle, even though they're using this exact strategy almost every game. So, what is it? It's hyper-aggressive gameplay, but here's the thing. Most players already know that aggression works, but they don't know how or when to be aggressive. In this video, we're going to show you some examples of bad aggression and why it holds players back. But then we'll teach you some of the three ways you can have rank one level aggression, which we guarantee will deliver results. And no, this isn't just for melee cleaves or RMP. In fact, we're going to show you that the key to beating those comps is being hyper aggressive in the right moment. Today, we're going to prove that playing aggro in the right way and at the right time is the best and most efficient way to gain rating no matter what your experience or the class you play. If there's one thing we want you to learn from this video, it's the following. Every second you spend not being aggressive means the enemy team is gaining more and more momentum, which means you are getting further and further behind. Let's start with an experience that we're all familiar with. The gates open, the enemy team runs directly on top of you. Suddenly you're in a stun, your weak ores are going crazy, and your HP plummets in one second, and the panic sets in. You freeze. Suddenly you don't even remember your damage rotation. You blow a defensive because that's the only thing you can think about. And by a miracle, you survive. But the moment you think it's over, boom, you're instantly under pressure again, and it never ends. We've all had these miserable games and thought to ourselves, how is that even fair? One advantage of playing aggressive is the psychological pressure that it puts on players. When we're under stress, we tend to make bad decisions. And when you're taking infinite damage and getting blasted by CDs, it can even be hard to remember your own damage rotation. And wow, being aggressive has worked in every single expansion for the last decade. Here's Joe Fernandez. He's on stage at the 2015 European Regionals being interviewed in front of thousands of viewers by none other than Anna Prosser, who's about to ask him his team's secret strategy. Now keep in mind that after this event, Joe's going to go on to win BlizzCon, the most prestigious PvP tournament of the year. So what was the secret that Joe's team was hiding all this time? Um, I think we do the most damage out of any other turbo and just get random kills. That's the main thing. You heard that right. Do more damage and get random kills. Now, obviously, his team's success was a bit more complicated than just do more damage, but his answer wasn't wrong. We watch hours of VODs from the community every week, and one thing that's immediately apparent is how quickly Rank 1 players establish pressure. They understand that Arena is a game of tempo, and in Solo Shuffle, you need to stay ahead. Most players know this, but they don't see the nuance it takes to be aggressive in the right way because it's more than just using offensives early. While damage is at the core of being aggressive, it needs to be combined with other things too, one of them being control. Let's look at the start of this solo shuffle game. Without any hesitation, both the warrior and the mage run directly on top of the enemy team, and in less than 10 seconds, the warrior has already used a major offensive cooldown. But more importantly, he combined it with a stun on the kill target, which is important because his mage blinked in to immediately CC the shaman. So without any communication, our warrior and mage played insanely aggressive together, and in doing so, would force multiple major CDs within the first 20 seconds of the game starting. In fact, the enemy priest wound up overlapping life swap with Trinket Spirit Link because the pressure was too much to make accurate decisions. These aren't bad players. Even at high ratings, people choke, and they're more likely to choke when instantly overwhelmed by damage and crowd control. The most common problem we see for players struggling to climb is that they routinely fail to combine damage and CC properly. Take this example. We have a damage CD combined with crowd control. This is by definition, an aggressive opener. But there's no CC on the enemy healer, who has no problem dealing with the early aggression from our mage. Now let's compare that to Peekaboo playing mage. He immediately blinks on top of the enemy healer to polymorph and then instantly blasts both melee DPS with damage. 
even though the enemy warrior just popped Spear, Avatar, and Bladestorm, they are the ones who are now behind since Peekaboo completely took their healer out of the game while pumping damage. That's the part that matters most. If you want to be aggressive, you can't just rely on popping your CDs. If you want to make your aggression matter, it needs to be combined with effective CC. We've shown you this data before. This is average DPS from lobbies under combatant. If you compare it to rival and duelist DPS, there's almost a 20% difference across the board. This is why we put damage and healing at the core of our class courses at skillcap.com. Our website teaches all the PvP fundamentals from the ground up, which allows our users to gain ratings stupidly fast. Sometimes all it takes to climb rating is knowing the nuances of your rotation, which we teach in our damage guides, as well as our Master in Minutes courses, which teach you the hidden secrets of your class in less time than it takes to get a solo shuffle queue. We make it our commitment to make sure you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. That's because our guides are proven to work, and if they don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. At this point, you might be saying, there's no way I can play aggressive, my healer sucks, I push in, and I just die. This is one of the biggest misconceptions in PvP, and the reason it might feel like your healer sucks is because you aren't being aggressive enough. In fact, Sometimes being aggressive is the key to playing with inexperienced healers. Remember the golden rule. Every second you spend not being aggressive means the enemy team is gaining more and more momentum, which means you are getting further and further behind. Instead, by being hyper aggressive with your damage and CC, you can actually force the enemy team to pull away, which means your healer has less to worry about. Of course, there will be moments where you fall behind. Take here for instance, solo shuffle game against none other than RMP. Of course the RMP will be the ones with early aggression, but look how Mez manages the situation. To deal with the opener, he aggressively trades AMS with all of his offensive cooldowns. Even though his healer was getting blasted by CC, Mez knows that by being aggressive, he can reverse pressure. He even manages to chain CC with his damage by following up his Warlock spell lock with a silence into a stun. Just moments ago, the RMP had the aggressive opener, but it was countered instantly by counter-aggression. Again though, this doesn't just apply to melee. Despite the fact that your favorite streamers are saying that CC doesn't even matter, one of the quickest ways to stop pressure on your team is to start pressuring the enemy healer with spammable crowd control. Instead of just peeling DPS, consider pushing for CC on the healer. If you combine this with enough damage, you will now be the ones in control and can force even the deadliest comps to instantly retreat. If you're a caster who finds themselves getting bullied by melee lobbies and solo shuffle, this could be the single biggest adjustment you can make. Caster DPS often make the mistake of focusing too much on surviving. Even though there might be a potential path to victory once CC lands, some players choke and only think about running away and avoiding damage without realizing that instead, they have an opportunity to reverse pressure more efficiently by being more aggressive. Instead of running away forever, you need to eventually fight back and deal as much damage as possible. This can feel hard in today's meta, but a lot of caster damage is actually tied to instant cast globals. In the moment you're able to snipe CC on the enemy healer, you need to take it. These opportunities don't come often, but they are your only chance at reversing the aggression when damage isn't enough. If you're a melee in a lobby with a caster, your aggression is the key to making sure your partner has any chance at overcoming brutal melee lobbies. Look at Joe here. He starts the game by diving into the enemy team instantly and popping multiple offensives because he knows that it'll be much harder for his warlock to get pressure rolling if the melee stay connected. By establishing pressure early on, not only does it make the melees less free to tunnel the warlock, but it also means he opens up win conditions later on. The aggressive opener was an investment into a future kill. By now, it should be clear that playing aggressive with damage and CC are crucial for overcoming the pressure of the enemy team. But now it's time to add even more depth. This time with defensive cooldowns, of all things. Yeah, that's right. Your aggression even applies to the way you use defensives. This might sound counterintuitive, we get it, so we're going to break it down for you. One of the worst things you can do after using a defensive is to run away. 
Instead, you should use your defensives to deal more damage. Now, to be clear, we aren't suggesting you should use every single defensive cooldown just to keep up pressure. As a mage, you might have moments to aggressively block CC to land kills, but that's not what we're talking about here. Instead, we're referring to how you should act once a defensive has been used. Imagine you're playing a DK into a caster-heavy lobby. Your main line of defense is AMS, which will not only keep you alive, but make you immune to casted CC. This small window of immunity is vital, since it allows you to deal unstoppable damage. This means whenever you need to press AMS, you should instinctively use your increased bulkiness to start reversing pressure. If you don't do this, you're not getting full value out of the CD. The same is true for virtually every defensive cooldown. On their surface, they keep you alive, but more importantly, they give you the breathing room to deal damage. This is especially true for a cooldown like Unending Resolve. As a Warlock, you'll have lobbies where you get absolutely pummeled by melee. Because Unending Resolve gives you kick immunity, it means you get the most value out of your main defensive by casting as much as you possibly can while it's active. If you're simply using your defensives to survive, you aren't doing enough. This even applies to how healers use their CDs in Arena, which we made an entire video about when we introduced the concept of tempo trading. As a healer, some of your cooldowns are designed to keep your team aggressive. Tree form is the perfect example. Instead of holding on to the ability and only using it to react to enemy damage, you can instead trade your cooldowns more aggressively to keep your team safe while they keep up the pressure. Since Treeform lasts 30 seconds, it means your team has an incredibly long window to stay in the fight, which allows you to win the tempo war. Now, this new form of cooldown trading is one of many things we cover in our class courses, and you can learn some key tips on how to min-max your defensive cooldowns in easy-to-follow Master in Minutes guides. We've now introduced two different ways to be aggressive, and the final one is often the most overlooked. It's Dispels, which includes both offensive and defensive versions. Offensive Dispels are a bit easier to understand when it comes to aggressive gameplay, but it's shocking how infrequently they're used at lower ratings. Now, in some cases, dispelling an important buff is the single best way to use a global. The issue people run into is knowing what buffs are worth dispelling. And there are some obvious cases, like Blessing of Protection. If you're playing with a melee on your team, there's no reason to not dispel buff, since it prevents so much physical damage. The true value in offensive dispels, though, is how much they punish very specific classes. Take for instance mages. Their most efficient defensive cooldown is Alter Time, which is a dispellable buff. This means if you spend a few globals dispelling the mage once they press Alter, you have a high chance at completely denying the cooldown. At the very least, you have a chance to remove other important buffs too, including shields. Virtually every healer will also get punished by dispels. Resto Druids rely on Life Bloom and Rejuvenation for the majority of their healing, and by simply removing these buffs, you stop lots of downstream healing. But Druids aren't alone. Preservation Evokers, Resto Shamans, and Mistweaver Monks all have very specific buffs that represent the majority of their healing output. This doesn't mean you should just blindly slam your Dispel key every game but instead use this powerful tool alongside your damage and CC to have even stronger moments of aggression. On the flip side, healers shouldn't neglect the power of defensive dispels to keep up with aggression. You know how annoying it is to sit CC, so imagine how miserable your DPS must feel if they're constantly sitting Fears or Frost Novas, especially when they have offensive CDs active. When your team is pushed and playing aggressive, you should try and support that by every means possible. Your team's pressure is what actually gives you breathing room. Hopefully by now, it's clear that there are multiple ways to play aggressive, but they all require using your entire toolkit. And if you're out here wanting the best starting place for learning all of WoW's fundamentals, be sure to check out skillcapped.com. Our class courses are designed around everything we discussed in this guide, like maximizing damage for DPS or learning how to efficiently trade cooldowns as a healer. No matter what, all of our lessons are designed alongside the world's best players. And they teach you everything you need to know about learning PvP as fast as possible without being overwhelming. 
So, if you want the best chance at making real progress, take advantage of our rating gain guarantee and learn more about Skillcapped by visiting the links below. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.